The loud max that we have here on the master channel is really here only to help with any potential um, glitches or weird pops or clicks that you aren't anticipating. So this isn't really designed here to shape our sound in any way. Um, it's just here in case something goes wrong that we couldn't have possibly anticipated from the beginning, helps prevent your speakers breaking or possibly you damaging your hearing. So it's just sitting here, it really shouldn't be doing anything, but we can use this loud max as a peak limiter, which is actually what it's called. So I'll give you a good example of when this might be useful. The beauty of something like the Loud Max is that it has an incredibly quick attack, which just means that it can anticipate and pull down peaks that happen very, very quickly. So if we look at this snare 808 sound, we can see that we have a peak happening really fast and it's very peakier than the rest of the sound and we might wanna pull that down. And actually, if we check this out, if I play this, just as it comes in and we look at the meter, it actually goes over zero, okay? So this wouldn't be like if we were making our track and being safe and smart about it, we would probably start by going into the clip gain and turning this down. But here's already an example where the loud max on the master is having an impact. You can see that is actually bringing down a little bit of that peak to make sure that we don't distort anywhere. We don't have any of that digital distortion. But I'll go into the clip gain and just bring this down by three or four. So now when I play it, we're at minus 3.9, we're good to go. But maybe I wanna bring this peak down a little bit, okay? Maybe it's sticking out too much. So I can do that by using the loud max, all right? If I pull this up here, what I'm actually gonna do is put this into link mode, okay? And by going into link mode, both of these are gonna be pulled down together. So when we actually are reducing any range, it's actually gonna sound quieter because normally if I was just pulling, let's say the threshold down, it actually is gonna be adding in additional signal to try to make up to that output, which is at zero dB. So with these linked together, it's actually like I'm bringing down the signal and everything will get quieter. So let's start pulling this down. And when we reach about minus 3.9, we should start to see something happening here. So let's go take it down right to minus 3.9 and see, or maybe minus 4.4. So you can't hear a big difference and that's because this is really transparent and this is why this is such a useful dynamics processor. Let's pull it down by like, I don't know, six or seven. Let's go to seven and take a listen. And let's turn this off. Turn it back on. So we're getting almost four decibels of gain reduction, almost completely transparently. So now if I go in here and I was to, for example, bounce this sound out with the processor on, all right, and we take a look at it, you can see just how much that initial peak has been brought down. And by bringing that initial peak down so much, it actually means that we could bring the volume on this up overall, okay, and not even get close to that distortion level. So if I go in here and I turn the loud max off and I solo this, we're peaking out at minus 3.9. If I go to my second one, and I solo it, and we take a look at the meter, we're in here at minus seven, which means I could then go in and add a tool device here, and bring the volume back up by about three. So we can listen to this first one, listen to the second one, so we're peaking out at the same value, but this one sounds a lot more full, right? And I could even then take it now and I could bounce it once again. All right, and now let's compare that first one and that second one visually. Let's change the color here. So here's the first one. Zoom right in there on that transient. And then here's the one after the processing and makeup gain. 
right? So a much denser sound, but the same peak value at the end. So it's a great way to make something a little bit beefier, cut down on that transient if it's poking out too much. And then you have uh, a very transparent form of gain reduction, which at the end of the day can actually sound a little bit different. So if we listen to that first 808, and then listen to the one post-processing, a lot punchier sounding, but same peak value.